a few people have pointed out to me in the comments that my clutch was slipping. No, God! No, God, please, no! We are tackling the biggest job that I've personally ever taken on, replacing my clutch. All right, so we have the transmission jack up against the transmission providing support. I have moved back to the diff here. Now I'm just taking care of the diff bushing. And what I'm gonna be switching it with is Einhorn Industries Unicorn Egg. I realized that there's a crack in this boot right here. I need a moment. <laughs> it is going in very nicely. Minimal effort. That's what she said. So I think I might remove this with a slice of bread. You take a piece of wet bread and you put little pieces of it in there. This is so gross. I made a Huge mess. This is disgusting. I would not recommend doing this at all. I just hope that my car likes potato bread. I was able to get the pilot bearing out. I went to AutoZone and I borrowed uh, the slide and hammer tool. It worked like a charm. All you do is you take this, you put it in there, and then you, you tighten it down and these things like spread out to the diameter of the bearing. And then you attach it to the slide and hammer. And then you just whack it a couple times and it just pops right out. So that was super easy. Now, gotta install the new one. Got the, the new pilot bearing in. It was pretty easy. I just used that 15 16 inch socket and a rubber mallet and just tapped it into place. There's kind of like a little ledge in there so you can't push it in too far, it just stops. So that is good to go. Okay, so we have the new clutch here. This is an alignment tool and it goes just like this. And then you kind of push it in and you can feel it kind of helps self align it. So you can see this is how the clutch moves. One of the things I really love about taking my car apart is learning how things work. And, you know, I, I always knew how the clutch and transmission kind of work at a high level, but I didn't really understand what it looked like up close. So basically you have this material here, this is basically like, it's very similar to almost like brake pad material. And this is the clutch itself. And then you have this metal plate on the inside right there. And you also have another metal plate on the outside, which goes in what's called the pressure plate, which I have over there, I have to grab it. And the clutch gets sandwiched between these two plates which squeeze really, really, really tight and then therefore connect the rear wheels to the engine. When you press in the clutch, the pressure plate is designed in such a way that when you put pressure on it, it actually releases. There's some really cool springs and stuff in there and, and that releases the pressure. And so the basically the clutch is just spinning freely w without pressure between the two plates. You release the pressure, switch gears, and then, you know, that smooth transition of releasing the clutch while pressing the gas is a combination of basically me making these two plates meet and do so smoothly. If you don't do it smoothly, it makes the car rock and jerk and all sorts of stuff like that. So I'm gonna leave this in place for a minute here. I'm gonna go grab the pressure plate and then we'll get it installed. All right, so here we have the pressure plate. This is basically the plate that touches up against the clutch. And you can see on the back side all of the you know, tension here, there's this shipping plate that's in place that keeps the tension tight until you install it. All right, I was able to secure the pressure plate and the way that you do that, there are these three little pins, one here, one right there, and there's one right there. So what you do is you just kind of align it and you just kind of lightly tap it around and it'll seat itself. So this is all good. And then what I do is I just have these brand new little bolts and we just go around and just tighten them up. And then I'm gonna pull out the torque wrench and we'll have to torque these guys to spec. All right, that is off. Now I'm gonna take this guy and 
Just put it back into the alignment tool. That way I could pull it out. There we go. All right. We're in business. Eventually. A ton of progress here. The transmission is up. I got all of the bolts in and kind of tight, like maybe a couple ugga duggas on the, on the impact wrench just to get it in place. The next step before I tighten everything down is I want to just kind of test and make sure that the clutch engages and that everything is good to go, but I can't do it just yet because we have to bleed all the brakes in these cars. The brakes and the clutch are all connected in terms of the hydraulic fluid. So it is right here underneath the driver's side air box. So we're gonna take that off and then I have a pump right here. So we're gonna hook it up and we're gonna add new fresh brake fluid. Okay, a couple things to note with bleeding the brakes. So after you hook this up, you wanna start as far away from the brake cylinder as possible and then work your way towards it. So the brake cylinder's right here. So first we're gonna start with the rear right caliper. Then we're gonna move on to the rear left caliper. Then we're gonna move on to the front right caliper. Then we're gonna do the slave cylinder. Then we're gonna move to the driver's side caliper. Once we have all of that done, then what we'll be able to do is actually test the clutch and make sure that it's engaging and all of that. The other thing that's important to note is that brake fluid is incredibly corrosive to your paint. So you have to be really careful not to spill any on the paint. If you do, you gotta wipe it up immediately and you're still probably a little SOL there. So uh, you just have to exercise extreme caution with this brake fluid because it's basically like paint thinner. So we've got our type 200 brake fluid here. So we're gonna take this cap, screw it on here. Really tight, okay. All right, so I got it right here. I'm gonna take this guy, connect it. Let's pump it up. Don't you know, pump it up. You've got to pump it up. Nice and slow, making sure that it doesn't leak. I'm gonna get it up to 15. I'm gonna put it right there for now. Okay, it's holding. I don't see any decrease. All right, we're in business. And now I have a little bottle here that we're gonna use. We're gonna hang it. All right, so now I'm gonna take it and just pop it on like that. And then this is six millimeters. So we're just gonna take it and we're gonna turn it just like that. All right, so now we just let it drain, look for the color change, and then we'll move on to the next. All right, so we moved on to the front here. You can see that brake flow is pretty nasty. So it's looking clear where, where it's coming out. All right, I got the slave cylinder right here. I loosened it up, and so now I'm just gonna slowly turn it. Oh, I, f I can feel, feel it coming through, and then I can also see it. There it is. All right, I just made my first huge mistake. So I'm bleeding the brakes. I got all of them bled and everything. And I was I bled the slave cylinder and then I buttoned everything up. We were good to go. And I checked the clutch feel and it, it felt like there was still air in the line. So I decided, okay, let's drain a little bit more of the fluid out. Maybe there's some air in there. Uh, and I decided to remove the slave cylinder entirely. So I removed it and I tapped it. And sure enough, when I did that, air came out. Then I went to put it back in and there was like a lot of pressure and I kind of like wiggled it and pushed it and it seated into place and then I bolted it in and then I got in the car and I stepped on the clutch and pop and I get under the car and there's just brake fluid everywhere and it's coming from the bell housing and that's when I realized that the pump for draining the fluid was still attached at like 15 psi and all of that pressure literally just popped the slave cylinder and so now i've got a spring i've got like a rod i've got like a bunch of stuff from the slave cylinder in my bell housing as well as a bunch of brake fluid which i don't want like flying around in there so i have to take the transmission off and 
get all that stuff out of there and clean it up. Let's see if I can just like separate it an inch or two just enough to kind of clean it out and get those parts out of there without disconnecting all of the wiring. It's amazing because it's like the lit, like just because I stepped on the brake pedal, like I just, you know, added like an hour or two of work. Unbelievable. All right, I fixed the problem. It's really amazing the first time you do things, it takes so long because you're just figuring everything out for the first time, but I was able to unbolt the transmission, separate it, clean out all the brake fluid that's in that was in there, remove the pieces of the slave cylinder that were in there, and then bolted it all back together. I had to separate the wiring. I put the wiring back. I, I just used the, the old slave cylinder, bled that, and now everything feels great. So lesson learned here, do not touch your brakes and do not touch your clutch while your pressure bleeder kit is hooked up to the expansion tank with 15 PSI. Lesson learned, that cost me like two hours of time because of my silliness. The only thing really that I have left before I just put everything back together are the rear diff bushings. I also fixed the CV boot. Well, not the CV boot, but the CV joint. Got it all oiled up and, and good to go there. Other than installing the drive shaft and putting everything back together and doing the rear diff bushings, we're good to go. All right, so I'm underneath, underneath the rear of the car here. And the goal is to remove these bushings. There's some really light cracking here. So to do it, uh, this, in, this is the entire subframe right here. And it bolts up right there, right there, and right there, okay? Now, we don't wanna completely remove all four or the entire subframe will drop and that would be bad. So we just wanna loosen it enough to get this to come down so that we can, we can access it. To get these out, they're 21 millimeters. You're probably gonna to wanna to use a breaker bar. And then I'm gonna do kind of one at a time and back it out and then bring it in like five turns. All right, you can see there's a lot more clearance now. I removed the rear subframe mount and then the front ones, uh, I only loosened. I actually didn't even fully take them out that far. So um, I feel like I have enough room here. Okay, so I've supported the diff with a jack. I just have like a little hockey puck in here. Once we unbolt these two bolts here, then the diff is gonna wanna drop down. Got a U-joint right there. Um, and then I've got, these are three eighths inch. Uh, so I'm actually gonna use an adapter and a breaker bar to get this one out. So this was super not easy to remove that bolt. Uh, I got it off. So the problem is there's a nut on one side uh, with a washer and then the bolt goes up through there. So that means that you need to hold the nut in order to get it out. The problem is to get to the nut, it's on the other side of the, the CV joint out up here. So you need to use a universal joint. So I basically, this is half inch wrench ratchet with a U-joint, 18 millimeter here. And then this is 3 eighths uh, inch with an 18 millimeter and a U-joint here. And I use that on this side. All right, so I actually wound up removing the diff entirely um, to get better access to the bushings on the other side, which, you know, was a little bit of double work because I wound up reinstalling the diff after I uh, put those bushings in. I have a transmission jack here. I was able to basically just lower it and kind of wiggle it out of the way. Now everything is freed up. So next up here is simply uh, to remove these bushings. I think though, before doing so, uh, I was watching a video from E39 Source. I'll link that in the description below because it was very helpful. Uh, they actually removed these entirely. So I think I might end up doing that. These are loosened, the front subframe bolts. So I think I'll just uh, remove these entirely. The problem is this is in the way. So I really can't get anything on this side of the bushing to push it out. So if I remove those two bolts, the entire subframe will drop just a little bit and I'll be in a way better position to remove these. All right, so I'm working on the bushing here and the way I'm doing it, I picked up just a threaded rod at Home Depot. Um, you can get this at Home Depot or Lowe's. It comes in a really long rod and then you can use an angle grinder or you can use a Dremel and you can just 
cut it to the length that you need it, and then you just get some nuts. These nuts? Ha! <laughs> Gotti! <he. laughs> <Got he. laughs> so I just have a, it looks like a 22 millimeter uh, socket right here. And then I picked up this ball joint separator. I'm able to use just these different pieces. Um, so I've got one piece here. There's actually two pieces on here. This is like kind of just this little platform to hold, hold it. This is basically like a little pipe. And then this side is, uh, this goes on the outside of the bushing. And I've got a nut over here with a couple of washers. And so basically what you do is you just tighten it down and the pressure pushes the bushing out and into this bigger uh, cup right here. They actually make kits that are specifically designed for this, um, you know, but you're gonna spend over a hundred bucks for that. All right, it's out. It's hard to tell, but it definitely has some small cracks in it. We got the new one here. The other side is gonna be a lot more difficult because there's a lot less room to work. All right, so I wound up removing both of the rear bolts here and the subframe actually like dropped uh, pretty violently, like an inch or two, and it scared the crap out of me. Uh, the, the back two bolts are in, so the back left bolt over there is in pretty tight. It's only like a couple turns from all the way tight. Uh, on this side, it is, I don't know, maybe 10 turns from being loose. And then the rear two are completely removed. And you can see now there's enough room uh, to, to like really get at this. Okay, so we got the second bushing out, exact same way as we did on the other side. All right, I was able to get the rear subframe bushings in place here. It was really not easy but I was able to press them into place just using the rod and a couple of different cups from the ball joint removal kit that I showed you before. I needed to use a jack to jack up the subframe enough to get the uh, bolts in place. And from there, we'll be able to move the diff into place. It might be a little bit tricky maneuvering it, but my goal here is to first bolt it into place from the mount. And then once they're bolted from the mount, Kind of as I jack it up, actually, at the same time, I'm going to try and place uh, these CV joints in where they're supposed to go. And then after it's all bolted into the mounts, then I'll actually bolt these joints into the diff. All right, the diff is installed. I actually, when I had it off the car, I took it outside and I cleaned it. Now I'm moving on to the drive shaft. Uh, this is a new CV joint from when I ripped the boot. Um, I got the O-ring on there and everything is good to go. So uh, just going to bolt this up. All right, so that was some work. I am all finished. Well, I'm almost all finished. I have to put the plastic covers back underneath the car. I'm so exhausted. I ended up putting everything back together. And then at the very end, I was just putting stuff away. And I noticed that the the gasket for the CV joint going from the um, drive shaft into the differential was still in the packaging, which means I totally forgot to install it and everything was back together. The exhaust was on and everything. So I was able to actually just remove the, the bolt going through the front diff bushing, the unicorn egg, and it actually dropped the diff down enough where I didn't have to remove the exhaust and I was able to like clean it up with a paper towel and get enough access in there to slide the gasket in. So um, that, was, that was the last hurdle, but everything is back together. We'll do a quick glance underneath. All right, everything is tied together. Um, you know, I, I took so much apart and uh, it's, it's, you know, hopefully I didn't miss anything, right? Um, but I did strip one bolt pretty badly as I showed you guys before. So I have a new one coming, but all the other bolts are, are in the transmission and, and tight. And I think that uh, we're okay without this just for the next couple days until I get this in the mail. And then the other big mistake I made was I decided to use my Ugga Dugga machine to uh, bolt these guys in. And I didn't even have it on the highest setting, but it sheared the head right off. So I'm gonna have to extract that. And I ordered a new one and we'll put that one in there. That's it. 
we're good to go. Now it's time to start the car and see if everything works. All right, we've got the car down on the ground. Here's the moment of truth. first time driving the car in like a month over a month all right here we go okay okay ah oh, the air conditioning feels really good all right ready first gear okay ready releasing the clutch It's going, the car is moving. The car is moving. The car is moving. It's moving. Let's go. Yes, 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 yes. This is good. This is good. This is good. Okay, we have just some tight, some tight driveway space here gonna break the clutch in real real quick real quick she's so cute little dog okay oh my god the car is so dusty on the outside look at that look at that it's driving the car is driving it's going we got this we did it i'm so excited oh my god Woo! all right i'm going to run an errand right now hopefully the car does not fall apart on the way there 